Hello biology class. Welcome back to the next lecture. This is lesson four. As you can see from the screen, uh, it is the stomach. So this is the fourth, fourth lesson of this unit digestion. Uh, we have the key points above me. One, sphincters. Two, stomach sections. Three, rugae. And four, cell types. Uh, a lot of that might not make sense right now. But hopefully throughout the lesson as we go through it will make sense and then you will be able to follow along. Let's go here. So this is the first picture. Uh, you should have this in your notes. This is an overview of the stomach and it highlights two sphincters which is our first key point. The first key sphincter, pardon, the first sphincter is at the top, the cardiac sphincter right here. So what a sphincter is, is like a ring of muscle that is able to open and close. So the cardiac sphincter is at the top. I like to think of it like because it's near the heart. And then there's the pyloric sphincter. And it is near the um, pyloric antum of the uh, stomach, which we'll get to. Um, but the pyloric sphincter is at the bottom. So it would regulate the food leaving the stomach while the cardiac sphincter regulates the food entering the stomach. Let's get into some notes. So again, pause it here and um, you'll be able to copy this down and then you can listen to what I have to say about it or you can do this the other way around. So the cardiac sphincter is between the esophagus and the stomach. This sphincter prevents the acidic contents of the stomach from moving upward into the esophagus and releases food into the stomach. So its job is not to prevent, not, not to like regulate food into the stomach. That's not what it's there for. What it is there for is to prevent your stomach contents from going up into your esophagus, then to your mouth and you throwing up. It is the first line of defense. So um, a lot of people get that confused where the cardiac sphincter's job is to regulate food going into the stomach. That's only partially true, but that's not the reason that it's there. The reason that it's there and its true job is to prevent acidic contents from going up into the esophagus. And then there's the pyloric sphincter, which is at the bottom, and its job is to regulate uh, how much moves from the stomach into the small intestine. It acts as a valve to control the flow of partially digested food from the stomach into the small intestine. Kind of don't want to let too much at once. You want to let it out in bursts so that you can release your gastric juices in bursts to break that all down. So it is a regulator for what is allowed out of the stomach. That is its job. So that gets a little bit confusing. Cardiac is at the top, pyloric is at the bottom of the stomach. So that is key point one with sphincters. We'll now get into the sections of the stomach and I believe you have this in your notes as well. Uh, the very top section where the cardiac sphincter is, is known as the cardia. So I'm going to flip back and forth here. Make sure you pause and get this down. Uh, so the cardia is this section at the top of the stomach where the cardiac sphincter is. So that is part one of the stomach. We also have the fundus. Now, if we see from both of our diagrams, there's a curved upper part. So the stomach goes up a little bit and it is this upper part here that is the fundus. So if I was going to show you on this other diagram, it would be this part right here that is the fundus. It is the part that goes up and over the cardiac sphincter. So I might even include this right here. All that part would be the fundus. And it allows space for expansion and if it gets full of liquids that you are going to then be uh, food or liquid you're going to then be throwing up the esophagus. So uh, the fundus is the formed uh, is formed in the upper curved part. The body is the main central region of the stomach which makes sense. That is the big part of it in the middle. And then there's the pyloric antrum which is at the bottom where the pyloric sphincter is right here. So uh, the pyloric antrum is the lower section of the stomach that empties contents into the small intestine. So the cardia has the cardiac sphincter and the pyloric antum has the uh, pyloric sphincter. The fundus is the part of the, the top part of the um, 
stomach and the body is the main central region, the largest portion. So that is key point two, uh, stomach sections. So food in the stomach, uh, the duration of food in the stomach is about two to four hours. So two to four hours after you eat, the, the, the food in the stomach is gone. You shouldn't be throwing up uh, large portions of it anymore. Uh, in the stomach, there are lots of gastric juices mixed with foods. So HCL is uh, one main thing here. So these are very, very important things that are added. And we're going to get more um, into what's added in the stomach in the cell types, but this is also really, really important. So uh, gastric juices that mix with food in the stomach, HCL, hydrochloric acid. It's a strong acid that turns on enzymes and breaks down foods just because of how strong an acid it is. It eats things away. Uh, the enzymes um, that are released in your stomach, just one of them is pepsin. Uh, pepsin chemically breaks down proteins into, sm pardon me, into smaller amino acid chains. Uh, lactase breaks down lactose that we learned from our nutrition unit. Uh, if you're lactose intolerant, you don't have lactase. And mucus is secreted to protect the stomach lining. Uh, so there's lots of stuff going on in the stomach. Uh, food stays there from two to four hours, and during this time you're secreting acid, enzymes, uh, mucus, and a whole bunch of stuff to digest the food. It's really kind of gross when you think about it. So this is a picture of a completely empty stomach. And what you can see when a stomach is completely empty is that there's a whole bunch of folds. And this uh, set of folds is there for a bunch of reasons. Uh, they are called rugae. So rugae are the series of ridges produced by the folding of the walls of an organ. So these are stomach rugae. The purpose of the gastric rugae or the stomach rugae is to allow for expansion of the stomach after the consumption of foods and liquids. So it's all folded up like this so that when you eat food, it can actually expand. It is also able to then uh, contract different parts of the stomach to aid in mixing of food within your stomach. So we call this the gastric or stomach rugae, and it allows for expansion and for mixing uh, of foods and liquids and gastric juices. So um, if your stomach is moving around, it is the rugae that are contracting and relaxing um, and making that noise. So that is key point three. Rugae are the folds. So now we're going to get into the types of cells. So there's a few different types of cells, and we've already talked about a few things that are secreted by these cells. But cell type number one are the parietal cells. So parietal cells produce HCl, or hydrochloric acid, and these protect the body from bacteria found naturally in food. They break down different uh, foods. They turn on enzymes, so hydrochloric acid also helps to digest proteins by unfolding them so that it's easier for enzymes to digest. So it really works in hand in hand with a lot of different things. It is essentially the catalyst. It, it moves things along in the stomach. Without hydrochloric acid, you really wouldn't be able to digest things very well. Chief cells is the second type. So parietal cells secrete HCl. Chief cells produce pepsinogen. So pepsinogen turns into pepsin uh, to become activated. Uh, because uh, pepsin would destroy the chief cells that produce it, it is secreted in its inactive form, pepsinogen. So essentially, there is this enzyme that you need to break down food. But it is so toxic that the, if the cells were to produce it, they would just eat themselves away. And that would not work because you need to keep producing this. So what they do instead is they produce this enzyme called pepsinogen and it is inactive. Once it is secreted, it gets turned into pepsin, which makes it active. So the protein, this is the bottom point, the protein digesting enzyme pepsin is activated by exposure to hydrochloric acid inside the stomach. So because the parietal cells secrete HCl, the chief cells are able to produce pepsinogen, which when it touches HCl, becomes pepsin, 
and then is able to do the job. And the reason it can't just secrete pepsin is because pepsin is so toxic. It would automatically digest those cells that create it. So we just can't have that. So it needs to be secreted in its inactive form, pepsinogen first, and turned by HCl into pepsin. That is key. And I know it sounds a little bit complicated. If you guys have questions about that, please let me know. Um, but that is very, very important. So you might be thinking, once it's secreted and turned into pepsin, why doesn't it eat away at your stomach? That's because of the mu mucus that is secreted by your stomach. So the mucus is secreted by foveolar cells. Foveolar cells are mucus producing cells which cover the inside of the stomach, protecting it from the corrosive nature of gastric acid. So because you have these foveolar cells, you're able to secrete HCl. And because you, you secrete HCl, you're able to use your chief cells to secrete pepsinogen, which turns into pepsin. You can see how all of these things work together. So mucus is extremely important in your stomach because it protects you from all the uh, corrosiveness of the gastric acid. Uh, the mucus produced by these cells is extremely important as it prevents the stomach from digesting itself exactly what would happen if the chief cells tried to produce pepsin in its active form instead of pepsinogen. So again, pause this and make sure you get this down. Go back several times and listen to this again, as this is a very complex lecture, but very, very important. We've got two more things to talk about, and one of them is chyme. So I know it looks like chyme, but it is chyme. Uh, it is the semi-fluid mass of partly digested food that is expelled by the stomach through the pyloric valve or the pyloric sphincter into the small intestines. So it is all the partially digested food, kind of like mush, that goes into the small intestines through the pyloric sphincter. Chyme results from the mechanical and chemical breakdown of food and consists of partially digested food, water, hydrochloric acid, various digestive enzymes, anything that you've eaten, and anything that your stomach has secreted, including everything that we've talked about so far, mucus and more. So chyme is the stuff that gets sent into the small intestine. Um, we'll review. So we have the esophagus coming down to the cardiac sphincter. The, we have the cardia as this section here uh, where the cardiac sphincter is, and this part is the fundus. We then have the body of the stomach, which is the majority of it, with the pyloric antum being down here, with the pyloric sphincter being at the bottom. Now, all of this stuff, gastric juice, once it gets secreted into the small intestine, is known as chyme. And all of these folds that you can see on the top in the fundus here, those are rugae. Um, chief cells, uh, parietal cells, and foveolar cells secrete mucus. HCl and pepsinogen. Uh, pepsinogen is turned into pepsin by the hydrochloric acid and they all work together to digest the food. Um, now what happens when you don't have enough mucus? Uh, when you don't have enough mucus in your stomach, um, you can get ulcers and it's a break in the lining. So this is a very animated version of it, but you can see here there's breaks in the lining of the stomach. Um, there's a couple of videos that you can watch. You actually go in and see these ulcers and you can see, I believe, how to fix them as well. They're in your booklet. Definitely check it out. But what I'd like you to do as well is a little bit of research on ulcers. Now, in your booklet there is a website given, so head there and check out the questions and see what you can do. Um, and if you have any questions about what ulcers are or anything uh, that involves the stomach today, please, please let me know um, and we'll help you out. Thanks very much for watching everyone. I appreciate it uh, and I'll see you soon.